I'm really excited to share with you in today's video on the biggest opportunities artists have to get their music heard. We just invested over $1,700 on this ad campaign and I'm gonna be sharing you some of the results, but it's not just about getting on editorial playlists or signing to a record label in this day and age or getting on radio or some tour. The real opportunity is triggering the algorithm. And you see, Spotify's algorithm is so powerful because it analyzes the listening habits of fans. Whether they play a song, whether they skip it, they add it to playlists, whether they share it, and then it takes that data and it's able now to recommend other songs that are similar by looking at the different patterns from behavior of people listening to music and it compares it to other people and it says, wow, these types of people like these types of songs and they start sharing your songs out, right? They start sharing them out via the radio playlist, the Discover Weekly, your DJ and mixes. In fact, I looked at some of my top five songs over the last 30 days, and we've gotten hundreds of thousands of streams from those algorithmic playlists, not editorial playlists, not even the personal playlists of fans, even those, those are important or whatnot, but the real opportunity is algorithmic. That's why it's so important to have a low skip rate, but have a high save rate. And it's so important that people are adding your songs to playlists because that all contributes towards the algorithm and we want as many streams as possible the first 24 to 48 hours our song comes out so we can give Spotify this data so it can quickly start recommending it. You see the problem when you're not getting enough streams and, and giving Spotify enough data, it doesn't know who to recommend it to. And when you go and promote your song using some bot, some artificial intelligence that's like, or sorry, not artificial intelligence, but just some fake computer, well, then that confuses the algorithm and then it doesn't know what to do. We want real data from real humans listening to your music so Spotify can analyze that and share your song. Because even though I've got a lot of results here from investing $1,700 into this campaign to get more streams, right? The goal of that is to trigger the algorithm. And so here's some of the data. We spent $1,700 in the last 30 plus days we got 24,706 streams, okay, from this playlist that I promoted. Now, I know that's only $74, okay? So trading $1,700 for $74, I know that's not a great investment up front, but I wanna share what else we got from that. We reached over a half a million people. We, the ad actually was shown to 530,000 people. And we ran this ad to a Spotify playlist that I control, which had zero, it was a brand new playlist now, it has 1,900 followers on it. What do you think I'm gonna do with that playlist? I'm eventually gonna um, submit it to Submit Hub and all the different curators and become a curator and get paid for um, listening to other people's songs. I do not take money to get on playlists, okay? We don't, we don't do that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being a curator, okay? We also got 300% more Shazams. I shared that in another video. So people saw the ad, they heard the song, right? So they Shazammed it, you know? Our Shazams went through the roof, right? On, on uh, Spotify, okay, we got over 24,706 streams just on the front end of those songs, okay? And I could have put other songs on there of mine, but I didn't even put all my songs. I had other people's songs on there, right? And now, just two days ago, we just got an editorial playlist on one of the songs that was on the playlist that I was promoting, okay? So this is all happening, but I had to run it long enough to start to see some of this data. And this is what I shared in another video. You gotta be promoting at least for 30 to 90 days. As I'm recording this video, those ads are still running, okay? One of the songs that was that's on the playlist, the main one that we're promoting, was only getting like, like 40, 50 streams a day. Now it's getting 2,000 streams a day. Okay, and we have dialed back those ads, but guess what hasn't happened? The streams haven't gone down. You know, I think we cut the ad budget in half and we're still at like 17 to 1800 streams a day now because the algorithm has taken place. Okay, I shared in another, at the very end of another video, I shared that what, what happened on YouTube. Well, the music video for the song that we were promoting in the ad, it was only getting 10 views a day. 
Now it's getting hundreds of views a day. And I look to see, oh, where's this traffic coming from? It's coming from search. It's coming from search. So people are seeing the ad, they're searching the song, and then they're, they're, they're finding it, right? And they're finding the music video. So this is all happening because we're promoting the song. And my number one goal now is, is to give now YouTube enough data so its algorithm starts sharing it in the browse and the different feeds or whatnot. And this thing now all of a sudden comes self-perpetuating. So what's the real goal here in all this? Well, number one, we want to trigger the algorithm. We want that working force because it can get us more streams than anything else. But I need to give it enough data at the beginning to trigger that algorithm. I'm also building an audience, right? I'm building up my Spotify followers, right? And I, you know, we get thousands and thousands of Spotify followers a month anyways, but the fact that I'm bringing more in, so now that I, when I release another song, then that those people get notified. Because what happens when people start to listen to your song, when you have a new one, you start to get recommended and you show up in the release radar. And this doesn't just happen on Spotify, it happens on YouTube. If people are watching one music video, when they go on YouTube again, they're going to get recommended another YouTube video, right? And so this thing is self-perpetuating. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to spend $1,700 every single month, but I should and you should set aside some sort of budget so that you can continually grow your music until you have enough momentum right? And so you want to at least be spending something so that you can grow your fan base. But there's times when you want to do a campaign, when you're releasing an album or something like that, right? That you want to get out there and you want to launch this thing. And I don't know about you, but you can spend thousands of dollars in a lot of different places. But you tell me uh, a, a better place where you can reach over a half a million people, where you can get 300% more Shazams, where your YouTube streams go up, you get a Spotify editorial playlist, right? All these different things start happening and they start stacking. Now, this is all built on the foundation that you have a great song, right? And so you got to test ads at the beginning and you got to try different things. And I had to spend some money. A lot of the budget at the beginning was figuring out the best ad, the best part of the song to promote, right? And then figuring that out and then scaling my budget up. Like I didn't start spending over a hundred plus a day. I started like 10, 15 bucks a day, right? Trying to get it dialed in, seeing if I'm getting results. Like, and, and I didn't even share, but the comments and, and the shares and the social media following, I, I kept on seeing in my Instagram account, followed you because of your ad, followed you because of your ad right? And let's talk about building up the audience on social media that I'm running retargeting ads to buy my merch on Shopify or buy my CDs or buy my vinyl, right? All these people are coming to my account and I have a retargeting audience set up. So anybody that interacts with my Instagram or my Facebook, that we retarget those people because now they're familiar with me. Now maybe I can show them a CD or something like that because they've listened to my music. They've checked it out. And this is what we got to understand that like, sure, the ROI on the front end isn't amazing, but amateurs focus on the front end while professionals focus on the back end. I know the long term of this thing. I've been in this game for over 20 years and I know if I build a solid foundation and a fan base and I keep releasing new music, they'll continue to stream. And the point is, is that I push as hard as I can on the gas pedal, get as much power so that my plane takes off, right? And then I can pull up on the gas because now I've got lift working for me. Now I can glide. What am I saying here? I'm saying you front end it by promoting and marketing the junk out of your song for 30 to 90 days so that you have enough streams, you have enough data, and now the algorithm takes over. Now we don't fully turn, turn it off but keep something going because we want to constantly be growing. Like why wouldn't you want a marketing machine working for you 24 seven while you're sleeping? You know, and I like to have a balance of that between paid advertising, organic with me posting and that freaking algorithm and nothing beats the algorithm. If you want help setting up these ads, get our Facebook ad templates and training. Okay, go through all the process of setting up Facebook and Instagram as my best ads. And these are set it and forget it ads. It takes less than five minutes to set it up. You don't even have to target anymore. Okay, you really don't. 
the algorithm. If you have a con if you have a conversion campaign set up, you don't even have to target. Like some people say, well, you can't target Christian audiences. You don't need to. Oh, I want to target EDM or I want to target country. Your music is the targeting, or you call out your fan in the ad, and based on the response, Facebook will pivot and share your music based on who is reacting and responding to your ad if you have a conversion ad campaign set up.